So, it's been a good amount of time since Windows 11 has been out, and when it did come out, gaming performance was... Yeah, let's just say that the headlines didn't like the new OS. But after a bunch of testing from different outlets, it seemed like the issue was very, very specific to one thing, VBS or virtualization based security. But is it still a problem in 2023? Well, let's take a look at that on your boot sequence. Alright, before we get to the numbers, let's talk about a scenario where this would actually impact you. If you buy a brand new PC today, desktop or laptop, with Windows 11, or in some cases even Windows 10, you will likely have this feature enabled. If you decide to do a fresh install of the latest version of Windows 10 or 11 on your desktop PC, you most definitely will have this feature enabled. The only time where it's likely to be off by default is if you upgraded to Windows 11 from Windows 10 or you've just been upgrading the same PC for years. That's why for my testing I used this, a laptop which came with Windows 11 from the factory. Naturally, it came with all of the security features, including VBS enabled. This specific beauty has pretty basic specs. I chose this PC because FPS drops would be a lot more noticeable and would allow me to see if, uh, you know, I could feel the difference. It has a 12 core Intel 12500H and an RTX 3050 Ti. So what do the numbers look like? Well, I tested seven games at 1080p. I did five runs of each, disregarding the first two runs and keeping the last three to make an average. That's to compensate for possible turboing when the CPU and GPU are cold. Uh, I did the first tests with the PC as it was from the factory with all of the VBS features on, and then again by simply turning off core isolation. This is basically a fancy name for the set of features that is VBS. Future Snows here, and I just want to clarify some things and actually show you how to do it. So core isolation is basically VBS. I said that earlier. So press the Windows key, type in core isolation, and then the switch for memory integrity will turn it off completely. That's pretty important because I've heard from other content creators that the memory integrity toggle is actually for HVCI, and they said that VBS would still be on. That is false now. I'm sure it's probably because of a recent update for Windows 11. As you can see here, Microsoft actually makes a note of it in this March 2023 article, but now this toggle turns everything on or everything off. So yeah, this is how you turn it off. If you wanna make sure that it is on or off, you simply press the Windows key again, then run, then MS Info 32. Scroll down a little bit and you'll see if VBS is on or off. And so here are the results. In Modern Warfare with VBS off, we're looking at 113.99 FPS. With VBS on though, well, it's the same thing, 113.29. So no drops here. That's good job, Microsoft. In Rainbow Six Siege with VBS off, we're looking at 276 FPS. And when we turn on VBS, we see our first victim here with a 16 FPS drop. That's a drop of about five and a half percent, so not too bad. In Far Cry 6 though, we see something similar to Modern Warfare with both games having the same performance at about 85 FPS. Red Dead Redemption 2 shows a very small difference with uh, VBS off at nice FPS and VBS on at 66. CSGO is another title that has a bit of a drop off. With VBS off, it's at 337 FPS, and with VBS on, it's 310. This is a little more severe, being an 8% drop, but let's not forget that we're at over 300 FPS here. Then I tested Doom Eternal, and we see a small dip from 171 FPS with VBS off to 168 FPS for VBS on. Nothing really noticeable. Remember, this is all average FPS. Lastly, I tried Jedi Fallen Order, and once again, about a 5% drop with VBS off at 72.5 FPS, and with VBS on, we're looking at 68.6. So all in all, it seems like VBS doesn't make that big of a difference, right? But why did it feel worse while I was doing my benchmarks? Well, it's pretty simple. Let's see those 1% lows. For Modern Warfare, which I found to be running smoothly at all times, VBS off is at 82 FPS and VBS on is at 78. That's still just about a 4.5% decrease in performance. Moving on to Rainbow Six Siege though, and it goes from about 180 FPS down to 144. 
That's pretty huge on paper. It's a 20% decrease in performance for the 1% loads. For me, playing this, it wasn't really noticeable given that the continuous frame rate was still around the 144 hertz of the monitor on my laptop. But if you have a worse setup or integrated graphics, I can see you feeling that 20% drop. Far Cry 6 is where I really felt it though. While they both ran at 84 FPS average, with VBS on, it would drop down to the 40s. All in all, the 1% lows took a 25% decrease going from 60-ish to 45 FPS. It's a similar story with Red Dead Redemption 2, where the 1% lows go from 44 FPS down to 33. Oddly enough, I felt it hitch less times than Far Cry, but it hitched harder here. CSGO also has a huge difference in 1% lows, going from 131 FPS with VBS off to about 90. Thankfully, the high FPS made it less noticeable. Doom has pretty much the worst hit here, going from 1% lows of 82 FPS down to 35. And lastly, with Jedi Fallen Order, we see another huge hit at about 38 FPS for the 1% lows, down to a, I would say, cinematic 22 FPS. So yeah, in average FPS, there's not a huge difference, but it seems like VBS can affect the smoothness of your gaming experience, at least when you're CPU limited. Remember, if you're on a desktop PC with a 4090 or something like that, it's likely that you will not feel that difference. Future Snows here, it's worth noting that I'm using a 12 core CPU that has four performance Alder Lake cores. Essentially, I'm running a quad core eight thread CPU for gaming. Sure, that's not super common on desktops, but on laptops, it definitely is, especially in inexpensive gaming laptops that have very capable GPUs. So while my conclusion will stay the same, I would add that it's even more worth disabling on these kinds of laptop setups. Back to uh, past Snows. So. After all this, is VBS worth disabling? Well, if you know how to stay away from malware and you game a lot or you game on uh, lower end hardware, it's a definite yes in my opinion. But I wouldn't go and disable it, for example, if you're buying a PC for someone who might not have the best security practices. On the flip side though, it's a little bit weird. I've heard from other content creators that review laptops that the manufacturers sometimes disable VBS before the product is shipped. And while I commend them for wanting the fastest gaming experience for their customers, it still means that the OEMs are disabling security features. What are your thoughts on this? You can let me know down below. Anyways, guys, let me know if there's anything else that you'd like me to test because, I mean, this is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've learned something. You can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.